So as you probably know, we've just finished the Crofton Down House and did the handover. It all went smoothly. Perfect time to do a build overview of that job. I'm Josh, a builder here in New Zealand. Let's look at this build start to finish. So we called this the Crofton Downs build. It was a two-storey, 270 square metre, five bedroom, two and a half bathroom, big double garage, office, and large open plan dining living, two living rooms, if you include kind of like the dining living area. So we built this for my client Charlie, who wanted a nice home for him and his family. Um, the funny thing is that Charlie actually works in Upper Hart and his house is in Wellington, so, so I'd, drive, I'd be driving to Crofton Downs to sort out his build and he'd be driving to Upper Hutt to do his day job. Uh, so Crofton Downs is one of the hilly suburbs in Wellington, just up the Nio Gorge. And at the end of a road there, there's a bunch of new builds. A uh, developer picked up a bunch of land. I think we were lot 94, so there's at least 100 homes in there. Charlie first called me in January 2020. I was actually on holiday and um, answered the phone and had a chat to him and then pointed him in the direction of my mates at Prime Designs and Charlie and I worked together through the design phase. Charlie actually did seven rounds of revisions of his design to make sure that he got it working exactly how he wanted and while this could be frustrating for the builder we you know we just want to rip into it by helping Charlie work through the design phase it meant that when we came to building it we had already resolved a number of issues and by that stage, Charlie was reasonably hands off. We started marking out for the slab on the 23rd of October. The topographical survey wasn't lining up with what's on site. So there was some last minute issues on the 27th of October. We had to drill some holes. That was a really frantic week working with engineer and the design company to resolve that. And Basically, the house was closer to the edge than the original topo said, and so then we had to get the engineer to revise his drawings, and we had to drill some holes down a couple of metres, fill them with concrete so we could load up that corner. Uh, here's a photo of one of the holes right here. A nice clean hole hitting bedrock, which is always a good thing when you're building your house. We were drilling holes on the 27th of October on a nice rainy day. Then we had a slab down on the 4th of November, another rib raft slab. So the rest of the site, other than that problem in the corner, was a flat site. We'd already done the prep, it was real easy to get that slab sorted. And then we had frames arrive on the 6th of November. So two days later, the boys were ripping into framing. We then started the mid floor, which is, you know, you got the lower level and then you got the floor of the second story. We call that the mid floor. We started that on the 11th of November and by the 26th of November we had done all of the upstairs framing and we were waiting on the upstairs roof trusses. At this stage we were starting to get real close to the Christmas shutdown. I think the roofer's last day was something like the 18th of December and unfortunately we just missed that window. I think they did majority of the downstairs roof and they did a little bit of the upstairs roof and then we missed that and we had a four week shutdown over Christmas. Now that's pretty standard in the industry. Most of January is a write-off really for organizing big stuff. Some people come back real early, like the builder in particular came back early in January, but then the roofing crew didn't come back to finish the roof until about the 20th of January. So essentially from the 18th of December to the 20th of January was um, kind of like downtime or dead time. So boys started, carried on, and it looks like on the 28th of January we finished the roofing and we had also put a solid dent in the cladding. We then moved on to the inside work in the middle of February and it looks like we had the insulation done 
late February. And late February, I was also measuring up for jib. Yo, we've just arrived in Crofton Downs. This is a two-story, 270 meter, five bedroom build. Kicked it off in November last year. Got the roof on, windows in, and just finishing up the weatherboard. So we're, we're at that closed in stage. The client is actually inside with the Sparky right now. They're walking around getting all the electrical plugs sorted. We'll get a few shots of that. I think there's a TV, the plan is to have a TV there. Yeah, cool. It's probably the same. Uh, yeah, same, same. Yeah, so that was actually that Builder Boss day, flashback to that. So this is where we hit some snags with our timeline. It was really tracking well. And then there was a couple of things. There was the laundry chute. There was a big change to a downstairs internal cavity slider. It went from being three sliding doors that hung in an opening. So I think the main thing we need to resolve is the door. Is yeah, that right? definitely. We worked with the client and we decided that he would prefer the largest possible opening and we suggested a CA slider. That did mean that essentially for four weeks while we found that CA slider, got it made, got it installed, that the build pretty much sat on, on hold because we couldn't do any more internal lining and we couldn't carry on with paint and the plaster until we resolved those things. So there was the laundry chute. Um, we're just sussing out the details with the laundry chute. It wasn't an issue, it was an add-on that had to be resolved. And we kind of had to resolve that before we got the build back onto the normal timeline. Then we sorted out the CA slider that chewed up about four weeks. So that's a good example of how we can take a typical build and a typical timeline and we can load that up and we can say, all going to plan, we can do your build within this time period. But as soon as we start adding things or changing things, it's like a domino effect. and this one hold up here means everyone else's time just gets bumped a whole nother four weeks. And if not, sometimes more, because if we've already got a predetermined slot with that guy and now he goes and does some more jobs, we then have to work out his next best slot that he can give us. And so it does become like, you know, I've talked before that I'm a professional juggler and it is a little bit like that. We, we move this slot here. It's not just a matter of telling everyone come back in four weeks we have to find out where everyone's new slot of availability is and give them an updated timeline as, and even inform them, hey, we are back on track now. So there was a lot of engineering in this house, especially around the upstairs floor. Lots of the upstairs walls were loading onto spaces that were in mid-air. So this job in particular, we had five metal beams in the subfloor. And what the metal beam does is if the upstairs load is here, but downstairs it's in the middle of a room, it spreads the load to the walls. And then, so you can catch that wall upstairs and send it sideways to walls. It sounds complicated. It's not really, it just adds extra work. And then it also means that before we do any internal linings that cover those things up forever, we have to get the engineer back to sign all that stuff off. So there's a couple of photos in here I'm looking at where we got the engineer in, he asked for a few more straps or bolts to be changed, which is quite normal. And then we've resolved those. Here's a photo of me turning up on the night of the 23rd of February with a big piece of threaded rod and a long drill bit so that the boys can put in one extra bolt to satisfy the engineer's requirements so we can carry on with internal linings. On the 6th of March, we had just finished the external painting and then that means we can drop the scaffold. Now that's a great achievement because we can stop paying a hefty weekly rental on that scaffold. So it looks like the boys started doing the jibbing early March, so we must have finally resolved the cavity slider from mid-March to April. Basically, it was just jib, internal trims, like doors, skirtings, architraves, plaster, paint, and then we could start doing the kitchen. We are on the Crofton Downs house in this nice sunny stairwell. Uh, awesome to see the progress here on site. Last time we were here, it was just bare jib. The paint has been finished inside. Flooring is going down in the kitchen area and Sparky's been here and done a number of his jobs and we are 
we are on the home stretch. The kitchen also had a last minute change and it had what's called a paint finish. Um, because that's a custom product, so the paint matched a specific resin color. And because of that, there was a much longer lead time on producing and installing that. So once again, the job had a uh, hold up because we can't measure the kitchen bench top until we have installed the cabinets and we can't install the cabinets until we've got the paint finish. So there was a large period where we had done everything we could on site and we had to put the job on hold while this one specific thing was done. And that's totally fine. We, we were more than happy to do it and the client's stoked with it. It's just making sure everyone understands why that timeline's moved, inclu like including the client and e the plumber and everyone that's got to come in after the kitchen work. Uh, so one small mercy is we could do flooring as soon as the cabinets were in, and so we got that done early. So flooring was actually resolved on time. Uh, that was early May as well. Uh, and then end of May, it all started to come together and we got the plumber back in, we got the sparky back in, we got the bench top finally got installed. I think the bench top got installed on the 31st of May. And then so from the bench top getting installed to handover was like a two week rushed period. Probably more condensed than I'd like to be, but we normally say from bench top allow four to six weeks. But in this instance here, because everyone was stacked day after day after day, we managed to get that done. Is this a good overview so far? Uh, so Sam and I went and did the driveway and we managed to do that by, uh, we buried all that concrete by hand because we could park the truck right by the concrete that we were pouring. So it was about three weeks before handover we poured the concrete driveway. I think handover was the 11th of June. Yeah, Friday the 11th of June. Actually, I even did it earlier. I did it a day earlier for a moment and on Thursday afternoon, the 10th of June, in the end, uh, suited his timeline and my timeline better. And fortunately, almost everything was done. There was a couple of little things. So the wardrobe is getting installed this morning as we speak, the custom made master wardrobe units. They had this special range hood fan and we had to order a bracket. So they've, the Sparky came back uh, the Monday after and sorted that out. This is the first triple leaf cavity slider. I have installed and it was a bit of a mission working out the details. Most of the time it will be open but when you want to have a private conversation in here or watch TV you shut the door. See ya. It was a big house for sure and there was lots of space in it but it still feels like a family home. I think there's some things like the larger garage and the office space um, because the client's wife would work from home a couple of days a week. Like those sort of things made it bigger, but they also make it more usable and more functional for their family. It was definitely a cool project to be involved in and I'm proud of what we built. And when you stand back and look at it, and when you look at like how we worked with the client to help them work out their vision for the project and help them bring it together, I'm proud of what we achieved.